Welcome to Amazing Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Granite Falls, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Frank Waugh, and I want to welcome you today to our Advent Midweek Service. The holy season is a time for us to slow down and to stop so that we might focus on the themes that are most important in our lives, mostly those themes centered in the promises of God that are made evident in the birth narratives of Scripture. Each week, we at Amazing Grace are going to discover these Advent themes of hope, love, joy, and peace through the stories of the powerful birth narratives in the Bible. So please relax, shut out all the noise of your world, and pause to drink in the mystery of the promise. Please rise as you are able and turn to page 238. We begin this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God promises to heal us and forgive us. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For self-centered living and failing to walk with humility and gentleness, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships and for our unwillingness to see the image of God in others, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For jealousies that divide families and nations and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God and for carelessness with the fruits of creation, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. Please turn with me, as you will, to Psalm 105. We will read this responsibly by half a verse. I'll read the first part and you read the second. Verses 1 through 6. The psalmist writes, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the strength of the Lord. Continually seek God's face. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders and the judgments of God's mouth. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant, O children of Jacob, God's chosen ones. We continue with our second lesson today from the book of Hebrews as we meditate on the meaning of this season. And we meditate upon the stories, the birth stories um, of the Old Testament that give us the uh, preparation for the coming of the birth of the Christ child. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told. It is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the top of his staff. Here ends the reading. And now we will have a meditation on the biblical meaning of love. So, if you've heard of Jesus, you probably know about one of his famous teachings called the Golden Rule. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. And this, actually, is a restatement of something else that Jesus said, that the meaning of life is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's really beautiful, but what does he mean exactly by the word love? It's an unclear word in English, because you can love your mom and you can love pizza. 
And if the word love means the same thing in both of those cases, your mom's going to feel mm. real bad. So what did Jesus mean in his language? Well, first of all, this love your neighbor phrase is a quotation from the Hebrew scriptures where the word for love is ahava. However, the language Jesus spoke and taught in from day to day, it was a cousin language of Hebrew, that is Aramaic, in which the word for love is rachma. But then, as Jesus' followers spread his teachings around the world, they translated them into Greek using the word agape. But here's what's fascinating. The earliest followers of Jesus who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek, they didn't learn the meaning of agape by looking it up in ancient dictionaries. Rather, they looked to the teachings of Jesus and the story of his life to redefine their very concept of love. So one time, Jesus was asked about the most important command in the Jewish scriptures. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. And so this makes it clear that for Jesus, agape love is not primarily a feeling for someone else that happens to you, like our phrase, I fell in love. For Jesus, love is action. It's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well-being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy embracing love imitates the very character of God himself. Now we wouldn't be talking about Jesus still today if he had only said things like love your enemy. This is how he actually lived. Jesus was constantly helping and serving the people around him in very practical and tangible ways. And he consistently moved towards poor and hurting people who couldn't benefit him in return. He showed love for the forgotten ones, the people who usually fall through the cracks. And when Jesus eventually marched into Jerusalem, he made himself an enemy of the leaders of his people by accusing them of hypocrisy and corruption. But then instead of attacking his enemies to overthrow them, he allowed them to kill him. Jesus died for the selfishness and corruption of his enemies because he loved them. After Easter morning, Jesus and then his followers claimed that it was the power of God's love for the world that was revealed in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. As the Apostle Paul put it, God demonstrated his own agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. And for John, then, this leads naturally to the conclusion, beloved ones, if that's how God has loved us, then we ought to show love for one another. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love. Hey, thanks for watching this word study video by The Bible Project. We make lots of other videos and they're all about showing how the Bible is a unified story that leads to Jesus. You can go to our website, thebibleproject.com, see what we're working on, and even jump in to pitch in a few bucks to the next one. Thanks for being a part of this with us. Thanks, you guys. Now in response to that teaching, I proclaim the gospel canticle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the lineage of Abraham and of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. 
He promised to show mercy to our fathers and mothers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham and our mother Sarah, to bless them with land and offspring, and to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. God proclaimed, You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Please turn with me, as you will, to page 328 for our responsive prayer. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us and teach us to pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And also now let us confess our faith, confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you. But remember that always we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Go in peace.